Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass, and today I wanted to talk to you about using the formula tile in Magic ETL and the Beast Modes uh, functionality in uh, the card analyzer, which uh, they're the same thing, but just named two different things in two different places. Within Magic ETL, you know, oftentimes the data that we get in is uh, not perfect and it needs some cleaning in some way or adjusting in some way. And the there's a lot of different ways to do that in Magic ETL, but uh, really one of the most powerful is the formula tile, uh, which can let, let you uh, overwrite columns or create new columns and do a lot of different uh, functions to, to manipulate your data and get the data where you need it to be. So um, we've got in here, if you see under the utility section, add formula, if you drag that in there, connect it to previous tile, then you're, you're given this and you've got the option to um, create a new column. Let's just call this one, you know, bad uh, date reported. That. And then you can start typing right here or you can open this up into a bigger thing, which I'd kind of recommend because then here you can see all the functions that are available. You can filter to just specific types of functions and see what they are. And then when you click on a function name, you can read you know, how you're supposed to structure your arguments uh, within that function um, and some other knowledge base uh, information there, which is really helpful. Um, so say for instance, you know, I know in this data set, uh, I've got some date reported that are uh, future dates, which is really not possible in the world of claims. So I could do something like uh, a case statement, which is basically an if statement. So case when date reported, you see if when I start typing the name of my column, it will let me auto complete and I can hit tab. Um, then we can say greater than leverage the current date built-in uh, date function. So that would return today's date. Then we can say then future past. So a case statement, you're gonna say when something, some uh, evaluation, then what do you wanna do if that is true? And put that there and then else, you know, what else you wanna do? And you could do multiple when arguments if you want to. But in this case, uh, mine's gonna be basically one or the other. Then to make sure you've got it right, you wanna click on validate and give you a green check mark that you did things okay. And then you can click on save and close. And you can see it's kind of previewing the first row in here. And let me do that. Um, a lot of different things that you could do. You could say, um, uh, let's make one called claim um, difference. And if we open this up, maybe I want to look at the difference between the date reported and the date of the event. Well, there's a um, function in here called date diff that takes two different arguments. So I could say date reported and date event. And that's going to do the math and give me the number of days between those two uh, dates. Again, click validate. Yeah, certainly not limited to um, date functions by any stretch as you saw in there. We could um, do something like an uppercase. Let's just, so if you want to overwrite an existing field, so let's just take claim status. And maybe I want all of my claim statuses to be uppercase. So you can type the word upper and then say claim status and validate and it looks good. Again, you're gonna, you can see some of these features in here. Upper just returns a string with all characters uppercase. Also UK, which is the same thing. So sometimes they have the same function in there two different ways, but do what you're most familiar with and you can Validate that, and you see now that's showing closed. That's all upper case in there, and that's just overriding that existing column, not creating 
a new column. Uh, and you can also do, you know, math on on different things. So you're certainly not limited to um, anything here. So, you know, we could say reserves. And if we went, say, what's our difference between the total uh, reported and the total paid? So how much is left over that might be um, on there? So we can do that on two numeric amounts. This one's going to be, because it's a closed claim, could be zero. So a lot of different um, things, a lot of different ways to create new columns, clean up existing columns in there. Um, a very powerful, a lot of different functionality, very helpful. Um, and you can use these formulas actually in um, more than just add formula tile. They've added it now to the filter rows. So if I wanted to, I can click on add formula and let's take, uh, if we take this, if we want to filter it to um, not, so clean up my data set and not include claims that had a future data reported, then we're just gonna write, you know, they reported is less than or date less than or equal to really. They would be okay. So do that. Save and close. And so then that would uh, filter out those claims that have that future data reported in there. So those are available in the filter rows. It's also available in the uh, group by. Uh, tile as well. If you were to uh, bring that in here, you could do some formulas in here as well. I'm touching that kind of redundant, but you get the idea um, where you can leverage that, uh, do a lot of different things in here. So uh, then switching over to the analyzer. So in the analyzer, those formulas, um, creating formulas, uh, they call it beast modes uh, right here where they're once they're stored to create a beast mode they you click on add calculated field and again same uh, working space that you have uh, again you have columns that you can choose from if you want to just uh, double click on one and add it in there rather than the autocomplete oddly enough right now as you um, see this list this is uh, actually not as lengthy of a list as you see in the uh, Magic ETL, but all the same functions are available. So if you just know your function name, you can um, type it in there and it will. So for instance, we did UCase is not showing here, but you can type UCase and it would um, put that in, do that same work uh, for you. So keep that, um, be aware of that. Going to show you a couple other examples in here. So to build this um, heat map, I'm looking at the the time on job range. So uh, this is a, a case statement looking at um, a lot in here. Boop. You can look at this. So breaking these, uh, the how long they were working for. Uh, so looking at the difference between the date of event and the date of hire and saying if it's less than 365, then okay, then make a category of zero to one year. And when they, if it's less than 365 times three, you know, three years, basically one to three, make a category one to three years and so on and so forth. Otherwise, it's going to be 20 plus years. Uh, so that creates those ranges then that you see along the bottom here. And then this total reported range is uh, same idea. If we were to look at that. So now we're just looking at a single uh, value and saying, okay, if it's less than 25,000, put it in here. On these case statements, it's very important to kind of go in a, a logical order like um, ascending or descending because uh, when it finds something, it's gonna kind of jump out of there and not look at the rest of the criteria. So don't uh, mix in, like I wouldn't move when 70, 750,000 uh, to the top because um, that would get 
all of these claims in, into that first, into this bucket, and that would be false, really. So be thoughtful on how you kind of orchestrate your um, ranges here, per se, and how it's going to evaluate. Um, and then also for this particular card, uh, so that things sort correctly, because now you've basically made these all strings, you can do the same um, logic, but then assign numeric values uh, to it. And then you take that and put it into the sorting column. So then it will sort uh, in a logical order and not be scattered around and, and putting like these down here or something like that. So that is important to, to note on that. And then I'm using also a date of hire uh, outlier filter to filter my data on this one. So if we went uh, back up, and update of hire outlier this one. So you can see what this looks like. Okay, so if I'm gonna um, kind of exclude those out of whack dates. So if the data hire is beyond today, then that's an outlier, so tag that as yes. If it's they're hired before 1960, then that's an outlier because probably haven't been working for 60 years um, at this job. And if it's null, then say no date, otherwise uh, N. So then I want to, then I can just filter on N and get kind of true date of higher dates in my data set and know that I'm working. So you see, I'm kind of mix and matching a lot of different things in order to uh, look for, kind of out, uh, get the data that I want. Uh, and so the case statement, I find that I use quite a bit you know, as well as some of those other one. So hopefully that gives you a good example, good taste, what you can do in the uh, beast modes, in the formula tiles, a lot of different options out there. Uh, encourage you to um, create some and definitely be looking at uh, different things that you can do. Click on these function names and read what they, uh, what they can do for you. So Hope you found this helpful. Please uh, certainly reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a great day.